Hello everyone, this is Mark Wilbur at Touchewa.com and this is Phonics Friday number 13. Uh, not the 13th, not Friday the 13th, that would be unlucky, just Phonics Friday number 13, where we can continue to have great luck helping our students pick up English phonics and understand the connection between spelling and sounds, which will help their pronunciation, help their ability to learn words through uh, reading and context and, and all kinds of, of good things. Today, we're going to cover uh, GHs, and this is the first Phonics Friday since the very first one, Phonics Friday number one, where I have a, uh, an old saying that I remember from uh, kindergarten, I think, maybe, maybe even earlier. In Phonics Friday number one, I covered two vowels together, or a vowel consonant vowel, and the rule was the first vowel is a long vowel sound. For example, uh, the word sale, S-A-L-E, you have A consonant E, so the first vowel is a long A sound and, and the second vowel is quiet. The saying for this was when two vowels go walking, the first one does all the talking. Today there's another one, uh, I before E except after C or in words that sound like A, like neighbor away, something like that. Uh, E-I-G-H is the root of that one. All right, there are two really common patterns with G-H in them. Those are I-G-H, such as uh, night, fight, light, bright, blight, and so on. All of these are a long I sound. And the other one is E-I-G-H, oops. And, uh, probably the first example of that that your students will see is eight. Uh, you've also got uh, slay or, let's see, way or nay, like the sound a horse makes. There, there aren't quite as many of these as the IGHs, but there are still quite a few, and the rule is you pronounce them as a long A sound. And the other one, actually, you know what? I'm going to rename this. This phonics isn't about the GH patterns. This is about weird words with the letter G in them. third rule is not really a rule, but it's just an, kind of a bonus observation. If you've got E-I-G-H, you've got a long A sound, and there's an N after it, you don't, you don't spell like this. You actually lose the H. For example, rain or fain, and there are a few others. They're, they're mostly pretty old words, old sounding words. Uh, these are a long A sound, long A plus an N sound. So I, A, AIM. The spelling patterns themselves are pretty simple in this Phonics Friday. What's a little bit more complicated or, or a little bit harder is getting the students to use them if you're doing the oral spelling drills that I've, I've talked about in previous Phonics Fridays. So let's say you're giving your students a quiz with a bunch of words they've never heard before, and you, you don't care if they spell them the way that the words are actually spelled, it just has to be phonetic. So if you say, spell the word uh, rain, and they spell it R-A-I-N, that's okay. R-A-N-E would also be okay because it's it's not a it's not a memorization test of the vocabulary items. It's it's a test of of their listening and of their understanding of the, the phonics. Um, difficult thing with this is the students have already learned how to make a long a sound. Uh, I just I just gave an example of one. So if you say how do you spell uh, how do you spell way, the students will probably spell it. W A Y because you've already introduced the uh, A Y at the end of a word being a long A sound pattern. So what you there are a couple ways of doing. Uh, one thing I do 
when I first introduce these is I'll actually give students, uh, I'll, I'll give them a word and have them spell it, and then I'll have them spell the same word. So I might say, number six, spell way, and almost everyone in the class will spell it W-A-Y. And then number seven, I would say spell way, use a different spelling. And at this point, since, uh, since they can't use an A-I at the end of a word and they can't use an A consonant E at the end of a word, uh, they've only learned A-Y or E-I-G-H. Uh, later on, it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit easier just to say use uh, a G or something like that. I wouldn't say use GH because uh, you know I at least want them to remember that the the GH go together and not give them all the answers. Um, the other the other thing that's uh, that's good to keep in mind, of course, is if students you know learn this pattern and they get used to it. They will, I mean, they'll, they'll be reading words that have it in it, so they'll, they'll get a lot of reminders. This doesn't tend to be very difficult uh, after, after the students have, have already learned it. Some of the things like the, the NG versus N sound are extremely difficult even, you know, much later when you're doing oral spelling rules, but oral spelling drills. But uh, this one, it's mostly just a, a matter of making the students use the IGH and EIGH spellings uh, for a short time and then then after that you know they'll, they'll keep on reading enough words that have them to get enough reinforcement. So that's it for today. I believe that now I have covered all the spelling patterns that my students used to be taught before doing hop on pop. So I will try, no promises, but I will try to get to a bookstore and get a copy of Pop on Pop and show you guys how I taught that uh, for my, my students. And these, these are students that had only studied English for, for a couple of months, but they had done all the phonics rules up to this point and they had been doing oral spelling drills and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun.